In this tutorial, I'm going to introduce you to the camera tool in Adobe Animate. We're going to learn how to pan, zoom, rotate, and other things like parenting your camera to specific layers. So if you've never used the camera tool before, then you probably are doing your zooming in and camera movements like this. You probably add new keyframes, so I'm going to add them about one second here. Then you go in here and add your classic tweens. Then you probably go to those other keyframes, select your free transform tool, hold shift, and then expand your images out so they look bigger and more zoomed in, and then reposition the image to where you want it to zoom into. And that's fine. That works if we watch it. Looks pretty good if it's a very simple animation with not much going on. But if we tried the same thing on a more complex animation like this one, and this one isn't even that complex, I just have a couple guide layers, a background that doesn't even move, two classic tweened layers, and some easing in between. If we tried it on this one, it's going to result in a complete disaster. For example, if I add keyframes at, let's say, around 100 right here, and then do the exact same thing, you know, go to my free transform tool, hold shift, expand it out like this, and then reposition it to where we want it to zoom into. So let's say the top of the roller coaster here, you're going to be like, well, that looked pretty good so far. But if we go back and watch it, you're going to see it's absolutely destroyed. So all of my stuff, even now afterwards, like look at my, look at the roller coaster, just flailing away up in the sky. So just so you can actually see how much better using the camera tool would be in this situation, when I'm done explaining how to use the camera tool, I'm gonna come back to this animation and show you how much easier and better it is to actually use the camera tool. All right, so as you can see, I have reset everything to square one. So now we're gonna use the camera tool to do the zoom in instead and it's gonna be way easier. So where do you find the camera tool? Well, you can find it over here in your tools, the thing that looks like a camera here, and you can also find it right here, so add camera. So I'm just gonna click on that, and you're gonna see that it makes a new layer right at the very top. Now, this is an invisible layer, kinda of like an adjustment layer in Photoshop or Premiere, right? So you put the adjustment layer on top, it's invisible, but it's gonna have commands, like it kinda of tells the layers underneath what to do. And in this case, it's not like color correction or anything like that. It's just movements. Okay. So the camera has a couple key features. If you look up here, you'll see the slider bar and there's kind of two options of things that we can slide and adjust. So this first one here, when it's just the camera with the magnifying glass, you can see that if we slide this to the left, it's going to zoom out, make the image smaller. And if we go to the right, it's going to make the image bigger or zoom in. Now, the key thing to know here is that you also get the little camera, little like move tool that shows up in the middle here. And you're going to find it weird because when you click and you go to the left, the image is going to move to the right. And if you move to the right, the little camera thing, the whole image is going to move to the left. That's because you're actually moving essentially this frame here, which is the camera. So you got to think of it like this. Okay. So I'm just going to move this over here kind of like this. If I'm trying to move this frame to be on this B, then I would click and I'm going to move the frame over onto the B. Okay, so it's going to seem a little bit counterintuitive, but you got to remember that you're moving the frame here, not the actual image. Okay, and then the other one right here is to rotate. So if you click on this one, when you slide to the left, it kind of rotates. I would call this rotating it to the right. And if you slide this to the right, it's going to rotate to the left. And just so you know, if you want more precise control over how much you've zoomed in or rotated, then go over to your properties over here and under tool, you're going to see the camera settings. So you can see right now on my X axis, my X axis, the X axis, I've moved it negative 474. So that would be to the left. And then my Y axis, negative 191, it was going to be up. And then you can see that I've zoomed in 170% and rotated negative seven degrees. All of that you can control by just clicking on them and sliding it. So you can adjust more precisely or type numbers in if you want. Now, what's good about this as well is that if you get lost in translation, you're moving stuff around, you're like, ah, how do I get it back? You can just click this little back thing right here, this little back arrow, that'll reset the position to the original spot and then zoom here. You can reset your zoom to 100, and then you can reset your rotate to zero, and then you're back at square one once again. And just a little side note, if you want to get off the camera tool, 
you can't just click down here. It's not going to work. It's still going to be on that tool. You actually have to click to a new tool right here. So I'm going to go to free transform and then I can click back onto my other layers normally how I was before. And then if you want to go back to the camera tool, you can't in the same way, you can't just click on it here. It's not going to go back. You're going to have to go over here to click on camera in your tools, not this one. This one would be removing the camera. You have to go to the one that's in your tools and click on it and that will give you access back to that slider and the properties over here. Okay, so now that we have a good understanding of how to use the camera tool, let's put it into action by doing a zoom first. So you're gonna make sure you're on the camera layer and you have a keyframe to start. You're gonna go to where you want it to end. So at one second here for me, right click, insert keyframe. And then just like you would to move anything else, you click in between the keyframes, right click, and you're gonna create a classic tween because we're gonna move it, right? It's got a tween from one spot to the other. So then we just go to the final keyframe and then you're just gonna go to the slider and do what you're gonna do. So I'm gonna make sure I'm on this one because I'm trying to zoom in. So I'm gonna click there. I'm just gonna slide it to the right and then I'm gonna use my camera tool to move the frame over top of the fly and done. So now when I go back, we push play, you can see that it zooms in to the fly. And just like any other classic tween, if you go over to your properties, you're also gonna have some options over here like easing. So I'm gonna, instead of just having a regular ease, like just straight through, I'm gonna change it to maybe an ease in and out, and I'm gonna switch it to maybe quart right here. So I'll double click. And now when we see that, it's gonna apply like a slow zoom and then fast and zoom in, right? So you can apply any easing to these as well. And you can even apply color effects so let's say I wanted to, you know, adjust the alpha so I can have it go from being completely see-through here to visible there. So this is how you can also do a fade in with it as well, if you want. But for my case right now, I'm going to just take that off. I'm going to go none. Next, I'm going to show you how to just make a clean cut from one close up, let's say, to another. So I'm going to cut from this fly to a close up on this B. To do that, you just add new keyframes like this right after the other ones, right click, insert keyframes, and then you're just going to adjust your camera to where you want, kind of like a new starting position. So I'm gonna make sure that I move my, I'm gonna be on this one right here. I'm gonna move my frame over top of the B right there. Maybe I'll even zoom it in a little bit more and then move the frame to be even more zoomed in and over top of the B. So what'll happen here is it'll zoom in to the fly and then it'll cut over to the B over here. So I'm gonna go two seconds later, add some keyframes, and then this time I will show you how to pan. So now we're gonna pan from the B over to the fly. So same thing, I'm gonna click between, right click, create a classic tween. I'm gonna go over this keyframe is already right there. So this one, it's already right there as well, but we want it to pan over here. So I'm gonna move my frame. I've clicked in the frame here and I'm gonna slide it to the right because I'm moving the frame to the right to be over top of the fly again, right there. And if we watch these back to back, so this one I'll zoom into the fly, then it cuts to the B and then pans over. And then obviously you can do the same exact thing if you wanna do a tilt as well. So I'll just quickly do it, insert keyframes, click in here, I'm gonna add a class, create the classic tween, go to my spot here, and I'm gonna zoom back out a bit, and then I will just bring the frame down towards this, so kind of tilting from up here, down to here. And I'll just go over a little bit, so now we're on these guys, because they haven't had much camera time just yet. So now when we watch this one, it's gonna go from there, and then go to those guys, so tilt kind of on an angle or whatever. So the last one here that I'll show really quick is gonna be just rotate. So we've already kind of talked about it, but I'll insert these keyframes. Then on my camera layer, create a classic tween, go to this one down here, and I'm just gonna click back over to rotate, and I'll just kind of rotate around this way. Now, make sure you don't go too far because then you're gonna get gaps at the corners. So make sure that you stay within the confines of the frame, that at all times it's filled. And obviously if you need to, you can go back to the zoom in and zoom in a little bit more if you need to, if you wanna rotate it more so you get more frame in there like that. Now, something really important that I need you to know is that 
despite the fact that I've been adding all these keyframes to extend my scene each time, these middle keyframes here are doing nothing. So if you see here, if I take all of these away, I'm gonna highlight them, right click and just clear the keyframes. You're gonna see that nothing has changed. All of my animation stays the same because the only keyframes that were doing anything were these ones on the camera tool, which was dictating where my camera and framing was going. So why this is important is because if you have a scene like this, you could either, like a good way to go about using the camera tool is you could either do it like this, where you build all your camera movements first, and then you can go down to your layers. Like I'll just deal with this fly layer. So I will create a classic tween for the whole entire fly layer now, which means I can now add a keyframe right there and maybe like rotate the fly. I'll go a little bit further along here. I'll just use this one now, insert a keyframe and see how he's like, you can see here, here's the frame. I'm gonna move him maybe into the frame and maybe shrink him a little bit. So he's like trying to fly into the frame cause he was out. And then maybe over here, I just do, whoops, I went back to this one. And I'm just gonna maybe spin him upside down like this. So now you can see that the camera is still doing the same thing, but now I'm able to just focus on how I'm gonna animate the fly kind of on its own while the camera is moving. Another way to do it would be to add the camera tool to an animation that exists already. So I've done all my movements on this one already, and I showed you at the start that if I tried to do my zooming in and stuff on this one by using keyframes, it would result in a complete disaster. So I've managed to make this whole animation, and I'm just gonna add the camera tool on top of it now after the fact to kind of spice it up. So if I add the camera and then just go to the end to make sure that I add a keyframe there, I'm gonna right click and put the classic tween on it. Now all I have to do is find all the spots that I want the camera to move to. So I'm gonna make sure the camera zooms in up there. So I'm just gonna hit a keyframe there, zoom it in and then move my frame up to there. When it hits down there, I'm just gonna add another keyframe and move my frame down maybe zoom it in even more and leave a little space in front so that the next bit is gonna go there. And then probably I'm gonna move it here. So I'm gonna put another keyframe, stay it zoomed in like that or keep it, stay it zoomed in, keep it zoomed in. And I'm gonna move my frame again to kind of lead it a little bit there. And the last little bit, I just have to kind of hit this loop at the top to make sure I get that. So I'm gonna hit the keyframe there zoom it back in again and move my frame so it kind of hits right there and then I don't see any white. And then at the very end, I don't want it to zoom all the way out. Yeah, that's fine. Now, if we go and watch this, so we go to control test, you're gonna be able to see what it looks like with all that camera movement applied after. So this one comes up to the top, boom, it's following it along. It looks like a much more dynamic animation than it was at the start. And then I guess the only other thing you really need to know is parenting. So there's this little button right here. So it says attach all layers to or detach all layers from camera. So to show you this properly, I'm just gonna set some new keyframes right here. So now I'm kind of right back to square one again where I have nothing happening. Then I'm gonna go in here, right click. I'm gonna create a classic tween and I'll just do something very simple. So. If I zoomed in here, oops, I'm rotating, so undo. If I just zoom in a little bit, okay? So that's all I'm gonna do here. Right now, none of the layers are parented or connected to the camera. The camera is zooming in and it's gonna zoom in on whatever's in this frame and zoom in more and more and more and more, get closer. But if I were to take, if I were to parent all of them, so if I attach all layers, you can see these little symbols that'll come up. That means that all of them are attached to the frame where they were in the beginning. And you'll see that nothing is happening because I've, I've attached them to be connected with the frame. So obviously, no matter what I do here, nothing is going to happen. So, well, why would you do that? Well, you're really trying to look to see if you can parent one or two or three layers, not all of them to create maybe like a parallax effect, or maybe if you have like an object or something that's coming towards the audience and it's like driving down the road or something, this could be a way that you can do that as well. 
So if I do this, now if I unclick the fly, you'll see the fly now jumps to where I had it zoomed in. So now I'm zooming in, now it's not connected to the frame, so as I zoom in, it's gonna get bigger, right? It's not connected to be this size. So I could disconnect maybe just all the bugs. So the bugs, the bee, and I'll leave the rocks and stuff. So you can see that now the ones that are not parented to the camera, I can zoom in and out and control those where I lock these ones. So you could maybe see, like I said, if these, pretend this is like a car down the street here and you have your road like locked, you can now use the camera to zoom the car closer and closer and closer to you or like a planet or like, I don't know what, I don't know, whatever thing you can think of that you'd want the background locked and then this helps you to maneuver the objects closer or further away from the camera. But just be aware that whatever parenting you do over here is gonna affect the entire scene. You can see here that the whole timeline of everything we did before is now adhering to the same two parenting things that we've done here for these two layers. So if you want to not use parenting in one section, and then use parenting in another part of your timeline, you're gonna actually have to add a new scene. So right now we only have one scene, you're gonna have to add a new one and then copy those frames over. I do have a whole video about working with scenes in the description below, but I'll show you how I would deal with this one right here. So the first thing I would do is go up to scene, if you don't see it right here, go to window and then down to scene, and you'll probably see like a floating panel show up like this. Just click on the word scene right here on the little tab and drag it over here to dock it right there. And then we're gonna have to add a new scene. So that's right here, this little foldy thing in the corner, add new scene. And the yours, yours will say two, I've obviously done this already on this one. So scene two. And then what we're gonna do is go back to scene one and just copy these frames right here. So I'm gonna select all these ones from corner to corner, right click, and I'm gonna go cut frames, and I'm gonna go over to scene two, and then just right click in here and paste frames. Now on this one, I can put a new camera, so I'm gonna go to here and add new camera. I can do the same steps, add a keyframe, click on here, put a classic tween, go to this, I'm gonna zoom in and rotate a bit like I did before, but remember I'm just going to parent the rocks and the blue background so that the only thing that are not attached to the camera, they're gonna do the kind of zoom in and twist and rotate are the bugs. Okay, so that's a separate scene now, scene two, and if I go back to scene one, I'm now gonna unclick these two cameras and then highlight all these frames that I don't need anymore, right click and remove those frames. So that if I go back to the start of this one, it's still gonna be how we did at the very start. So our pan, zoom, twist, whatever is gonna be there. And to watch them all together, you go up to control and test, and then we can see scene one and scene two will play back to back. So there's our little twist and it'll cut right to scene two. So scene one right here, as soon as it ends, cuts to scene two. And that's it. That's my introduction to the camera tool in Adobe Animate. If you got something out of this video, make sure to drop a like. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. And I'll catch you next time.